Hey everybody, it's John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyle, and today we're gonna to be talking about how I fucked a thousand different women. All right, now this is a really outrageous claim. A lot of people are very skeptical, as they should be. All right, but luckily I have lots of proof and lots of evidence that I'm gonna carefully go through over the course of this video, okay, to show you that this is extremely, extremely likely, okay? I can't convince you 100% because I didn't record myself banging each one of the girls, and I can't show you Okay, footage of banging these girls because a lot of people are like if we didn't see him fuck all thousand of these girls Then it can't be true. Okay, that's not legal to record that or to even be showing that all right So that's not going to happen But I do have more proof and more evidence than any other dating coach in the entire community Okay, so I can reveal all that in this video and show you how yes, it is possible and how yes, it is true Okay, before I continue I want to encourage you guys to subscribe for six new videos a week All right, make sure you press the notification bell that alert you to every new video I put out, including hidden camera footage breakdowns, theory, all kinds of really good stuff coming out every single week. Now my old Instagram account, okay, my JMOF pickup Instagram account, I posted about 300 girls in a row of closes, okay? Maybe with some exceptions if I didn't get to take a picture, but I was taking pictures with each girl after the close. Like lots of times they were like in a bra or like panties or some shit, okay? Their faces were blocked or blurred. But it was very clear like that we had had sexual relations, okay, without actually showing me fucking the girl, which I can't do, okay, and guys are still be like, oh, well, we didn't see it, so it doesn't count, like, you paid a hooker to, to take a picture in a bra, it's like, don't, that's such a dumb argument, all right, I want to cover some field reports, okay, these are reports written about a particular night out doing seduction or doing dating, giving a detailed account, now there was a guy who had the alias of Matt281, he was on the RSD Nation forum, which is currently disabled, but that was the premier pickup and dating forum over the past several years, okay? Now, Matt281 was extremely respected on the forums, and why? He had the highest view count field report thread, and he also went around and met a lot of the top guys and spent extended periods of time with them and then wrote an objective, unbiased, honest review about his experiences with them with full details, okay? So I'm very proud of this report that Matt wrote about me, and I want to read it to you. This was in August of 2015. I had been with 450 girls at this time, and I had two threesomes in this night that he was hanging out with me. He hung out with me other nights as well, and I'll, I'll talk on one of those. But I had two threesomes, almost three, in the same night. This was back three and a half years ago, August 2015, okay? Let me read it for you and enjoy. He writes, first night of traveling, literally cock-blocked by Flo Rider in San Diego. Sometime in the afternoon, I hit up JMULV, JMULV, Phonetic, he's banned, I'll call him Jay from now on. So I was banned on these forums because I started a competing company. I used to work for Real Social Dynamics in 2012, actually, as an instructor assistant for Todd. And Todd and Jeffy said they had never seen a guy get this good this fast before, okay, the game. So the next sentence. For those who don't know, this is a guy that used to coach for RSD and wing with RSD Derek. He has fucked 450 girls, has a penthouse city across from the hottest club in the city, has a penthouse suite across from the hottest club in the city, and constantly pulls three sums and four stumps with his stunner girlfriend, no joke. Anyway, brother and I meet up with Jay at his pad and we chat, drink a little, and he talks about his new infield products he's launching and how he's marketing them. Meanwhile, his gorgeous girlfriend is just chilling, obviously not phased by the fact that her boyfriend is one of the best slash most notorious players on earth. Now keep in mind, this is a very respected guy, okay? He's, he's met a lot of the top guys and he spent a bunch of time with me. This isn't just like a quick little like, oh, I'm gonna just spend a little bit of time and then write this thing. This is an honest, unbiased review, okay? He's really getting into a lot of detail, as we'll see. One of his bootcamp students comes over and he shows him a bunch of specifics about his game, demonstrating on his girlfriend and then having the students try it. I've been going out ever since I turned 21, but some of this stuff was really helpful and practical. Interestingly, his game is all about logistics. That's the epiphany I've reached before when I've gone on runs in the past. When I'm not going out as much, I forget this. That's really the thing though. How a really good game works is basically ignoring attraction or getting it in the first five seconds, or at least having it develop naturally as you're figuring out logistics. The rest is just finding some way to hit all their excuses and get them to somewhere where sex can happen. Long story short, 99% of the shit on this forum is superfluous at best. What's possible is just so far out of people's realities that they have to make it much more complicated than it is. All right, so note that I've already had one threesome and now I'm coming back to the club. We head out to the club across the street around 10.30 and start hitting it up. First girl I talked to was a hot Swedish girl. Her and her friends seemed down to come back later. I introduced them to Jay and his girlfriend. I drag a few more groups of hot girls over to them. Everything seems to go pretty smoothly. Around 11.30, Jay and his girl pull a threesome and I'm on my own for a bit. All right, so there's the first threesome, boom, 11.30 p.m. in the night. 
He says, I keep hitting it up, things are going really well, but my phone is dead so I can't get numbers and I have nowhere to pull with Jay gone. So they come back and Jay sees a hot redhead girl he likes and asks me to open for all of us. Blows open. I'd already opened her, in my opinion, hotter brunette friend unsuccessfully earlier, but it ends up being fine. By 12.30, these girls are all ready to come back with us and fuck. Four out of five of them are smoking hot and there's only three of us at this point, not including Jay's girlfriend. So we were basically ready to pull them, but the ch my chick that I was dating at the time like fucking cock blocked here because we had just had a threesome. So he says his girlfriend, however, feels like she's not getting any time to have fun in the club because they just got back from the last pull. So she cock blocks, pulls all the girls to go dance. Jay's a bit annoyed by this, but it's still 100% on. Jay's fingering the redhead while she fingers his girlfriend. Every girl within a 10 foot radio radius of us is trying to grind Jay's girlfriend. She could pull chicks solo better than 99% of, of the guys on this forum. Okay. In the meantime, I walk around and hit up a few other really hot girls. What happens is that I'll hook the hottest one and she'll be totally down to come back to the penthouse with us, but then just one or two of her friends won't totally be on board. Still, there's a few I think we might be able to pull. About this time, Flo Rider comes on stage and everyone goes ape shit. The girls all want to stay until the end now. We wait around about an hour and try to spread out our pull options and get as many girls as possible to come back to the place. The night wraps up and we've got our five girls with dripping pussies ready to come home with us. There's only one problem. One of their friends is on stage with Flowrider. We send various people to go get her, but it backfires and two of the other girls go up on stage with them. Before we know it, Flowrider's crew has snatched up all our girls and walked out the private entrance in the back. Jay is equally incredulous and pissed. Yeah, that fucking sucked. Like we had chicks that were down to hook up and then the one chick on the stage fucking blew it out by when we went to save her, it took the rest of the group. So we head outside, try a few more pulls. I grab a girl who's basically a 10. Keep in mind, this is Matt writing this. And she's down to come back with us. Unfortunately, her friend is sick and my phone is dead. I have her give her number to Jay's girlfriend and text her from her phone. Next, we find the Swedish girls, which was my first set of the night, and pull them pretty easily. Unfortunately, once we get up to the penthouse, it all goes downhill. They're all super standoffish and not down, not down for hooking up. It doesn't help that Jay is antagonizing one of them while a student simultaneously runs a nice guy game on her from the other side. Finally, they leave and the boot camp students do too. A cute girl who Jay's girlfriend danced with earlier comes up with her friends. All right, so we had had numbers, me and my chick that I was out with, we'd gotten phone numbers. I hit up one of the chicks and it was basically a chick my chick had danced with and then she comes up with her friends. I take them to the bathroom. So Jay pulls her into the bathroom and his girlfriend locks in his second threesome for the night. The rest of the night is just a shit show of sexual debauchery. Jay is intermittently fucking one or both of the girls. In between, the girls are grinding each other and making out totally naked and in plain view. Hashtag blue balls. Just another typical night out for me, okay? So he writes, I could probably write another 10,000 words about all the shit that went down last night, but that's basically the gist of it. All right, now here's some lessons. Number one, he learned so much. Jay is the real deal. I'd seen some of the negative press floating around regarding him, of course, because motherfuckers are all hating against the fucking top guy at this shit. He says, but in my experience, he was a great guy and his game is just fucking out of this world. Number two, I've seen a lot of shit doing pickup ever since this journal started, but I've never seen anything like last night. Just seeing the way that absolutely stunning girls will come on 10 to 20 minute pulls home and have threesomes and foursomes is mind blowing. I can't imagine how far removed this be from the reality of the average guy. Again, this is where the fucking hate comes from. He says it's like a fucking glitch in space time, right? What motherfucker who's hardly ever getting laid, okay, isn't going to hate against a guy that's getting two, almost three threesomes in a night, okay, within 10 to 20 minute pulls, okay? Guys hear this and they think, liar, must be hookers, blah, 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 okay? It's not fucking hookers, sorry to break it to you guys. All you guys that wanna just dismiss all the proof that's in this video and dismiss all the proof that's been on the forums for years, okay, and just think two threesomes in a night must be hookers or must be a lie or like 300 girls on Instagram must be all hookers, like, yeah, you can say that. It makes you look fucking retarded, okay? It's not in the slightest bit true, and I can back up this shit in a million ways. Nothing to hide more proof than anyone. I've said that all the way through. Anyone that hates against me, I put out a video. I'm like, look, here's all this shit I have. What, what do you have to say next, right? Like, that's why I'm making this video. There's just been so many instances where guys are like, oh, I, I can't comprehend this. I can't comprehend these, t these feats happening in the game. And keep in mind, this was, he's saying all this great stuff, right? This was August of 2015, three and a half years ago at 450 girls. Okay, this, I've now more than doubled that amount three and a half years later. Where do you think my game is at now? Where do you think my skill level is at now? Where do you think like the, the quality and the effectiveness of this Leads Machine product I put out like six weeks ago, okay? Where do you think 
dad is at now. Like, where do you, what do you think is a night, a night out now is like? That's why I tell guys, like, this is what my game has evolved and improved a lot more since then. Who has field reports like this? Who has people writing about them like this? I don't see it. Okay, who has students that are getting 47 girls in six months? Show me. It's usually just a strikeout fest. Like, I met a guy in Vegas. He had been in Todd's immersion for eight months. And I said, how many girls have you banged? And he was like, well, I'm going out six or seven nights a week. And I haven't banged any in that eight months. And I was like, well, what the fuck are you doing? And he, like, y are you getting trained here? And he said, yeah, Todd says my game's improving a lot. And that's the problem. Here we have it. That's the problem in the community. Your, your game's improving a lot? Great. Does that, is that helping you in your dating life? Is that helping your love life? That your game is improving? That you're learning a lot about theory? Okay, that you're able to cold read and do all this other bullshit that Todd teaches? No? How about, wouldn't you like to get laid? How about that? What a novel concept. Wouldn't you like to learn how to get laid in a day or two? I know how pretty well. Number three, in the past, when I've hung out with guys who play game like a sport and just rack up numbers, I felt like I wanted to learn from them, but would never want anything like their lifestyle. Going out with Jay last night, I couldn't help but think, damn, I kind of want this. Sexual abundance beyond what most guys can imagine. An awesome, chill, and beautiful girlfriend in a rooftop apartment. It's definitely the fantasy. I'm just excited to be part of it right now. Cheers, LOL, what a first night. He says, most of the lessons I'm learning are little things that are hard to verbalize. The big thing that sticks out to me about Jay's game is that it doesn't stick out. It's just regular, solid game, but extremely refined and subtle. It's like if you were to watch a great pianist versus one of the best in the world, the differences are subtle, but one makes millions of dollars and one is just getting by. Okay, Matt281, he spent some more time with me and was impressed even more. I'm not gonna go over all his field reports about me, but he wrote in his epic 2000th post on RST Nation. And again, I would be showing you the RST Nation screenshots, but we had to go in through the Wayback Machine and grab these because RST Nation is currently down. Um, he wrote a 2000th post. It was called What I Learned Winging With and Living With four of the top guys in the game, okay? And these were all separate guys. One of them was the guy who I originally started my company with, okay? And here's what he has to say in that post. Perhaps the first thing you should know about Jay, which will probably be the first thing he tells you, haha, <laughs> is that he's fucked over 450 girls. Jay's game is a much needed counterpoint to all the inner game and self-help content that seems to have taken the community by storm. He's hyper-analytical about game to an extent that I've never seen and extremely methodical about everything he does. For example, apparently it takes 8 to 12 minutes for a girl to lose state in a cab and just about everything in game can be mapped with a graph or a flowchart. Jay uses alcohol, for better or worse, to take care of vibing and everything else is systematized. He's also an anything goes kind of guy. As far as game goes for Jay, the end justifies the means. If it's easier to get into a girl's pants by telling her he's a famous DJ, he won't bat an eye doing it. Whatever works. As far as he's concerned, in many ways, game really is just a game with very specific obstacles and rules. Everything is dealing with logistics and objections and very little, if anything, is off limits. Say what you will about this, but there's no doubt that it works. From the time I spent going out with Jay, it was clear that not only does he pull more frequently than just about anyone, well over 100 a year recently, but he's also been with some of the hottest girls I've ever seen. A few of them are quite literally tens, okay? Again, people will come out of the woodwork, oh, they're hookers. No, they're fucking not. He saw me pull strangers from the club, you stupid fucks. Okay, I spent a few nights with him in a few different cities and it seemed that three sums and 10 minute polls were the norm. Okay, now let's quickly look at some of the comments that people left on this post. Someone said, this is such an incredible post, thanks for sharing. Get him because I know, who was the guy I started my company with originally, it is interesting to me because he has so many lays at such a young age. JMULV is cool too because he can strip down game to its bare bones and get great results. Okay, another guy says, this is exactly why I need to start reading your field reports and Kat's field reports again. Those are easily the best threads on this forum. He's saying that Matt2A1 has the best threads on RC Nation. Okay, his field report thread is one of the best threads. He's one of the most respected guys. This guy spent extended periods of time with me. There's plenty of others that spent extended periods of time with me, okay, in these WhatsApp group threads. I put it out to the public on Instagram, 300 different girls. I recorded tons of infield footage for years. Put that all out, okay? I know what I'm talking about extremely well. My students are all crushing it. Case closed. Another big argument that I think is very important is the results of my students. Okay, I consistently have guys that got nowhere with pickup and dating, and they spent lots of years and time and effort and money on it, and then on the first night I transform them, boom. I have tons of testimonials where that happens. I have tons of reviews where that happens. Okay, on my live programs. What's up YouTube? My name is Loris, and I'm here to do a quick testimonial about John Anthony Bootcamp that I took a few months ago. The guy is the real deal. I got laid with a 19-year-old and a 20-year-old girl right there at the boot camp. 
So what's the difference between John's bootcamp and approach and other bootcamps or other uh, methods that you might have heard in the past? John's approach is a no-brainer and is result-oriented. The guy is there to get you laid. Obviously, there's no guarantees that you will get laid, but his approach is a very straightforward and goal-oriented. I highly recommend John's program. The link is somewhere around this video. Take a look for yourself. What I can tell you personally, I got results. So I recommend it. See with your own eyes and make a judgment. I've taken boot camps with other companies before and um, first of all, it completely shifted my reality into what is possible. The community teaches that uh, you cannot pull in the first part of the night. In fact, you need to warm up before you're ready. And they've proven that neither of these are requirements. Uh, the first night, um, I took a boot camp with, another, with a friend of mine. And the first night, John pulled a, a couple of girls with me. Uh, before midnight and my colleague and Josh pulled a, um, a couple of girls um, and you know I, they we didn't we didn't do any warm-ups um, they didn't do any warm-ups and this just really shifted my reality and this of course wasn't the first and only girls that we pulled that night or even that weekend we ended up pulling five or six and again in my other boot camps I not, didn't even see the instructors a, able to demonstrate this um, during the boot camp, John or Josh are right there with you. You can watch what they're doing, um, and they're right there watching and, and observing, giving you instant feedback of what's going on. They're really good instructors. Um, they're completely available for questions and have answers for everything. And John and Josh were like, hey, let's get on a Skype call. We got on a call, and they kind of broke down. Well, they asked how my game was, where I was at, and they, they tried to analyze what my issues were, which they were spot on. And then they laid out a quick plan of how they would attack them during my boot camp. So I really liked the idea, or the I liked how they laid it out. And so I decided to do the boot camp with those guys in San Diego. Um, first things first, the guys are super fun. Um, I had a blast. They're super cool, super chill dudes. And they're, they're great at what they do. Right out the gate, as I was talking to girls, they were just like immediately, they were just telling me the quickest way to get the girl back to my place or back to the hotel or back to the after party. Um, and that's why I really think that they, that they can help a lot of guys out. There's no fluff. I definitely suggest it. If you want to start having high quality, you know, high quantity lays, not even, you know, one or the other, but you get both. The boot camp is definitely for you guys. On my products, Okay, I just got contacted last month. There was a guy that bought my product when he was a virgin. Okay, he's in England. In June of 2018, he bought my product as a virgin. And by January of the next year, so within six months, he was able to sleep with 47 different girls. And he was like, oh, it should have been higher, coach. Like, I wish it was higher, but um, you know, I was busy. I couldn't go out as much as I wanted. So here he is. He hadn't been with any girls. He slept with 47 in six months, which is higher than even advanced guys most of the time in a six month period. And he's making excuses why it wasn't as high and he, or why it wasn't higher. And he's like, I'm like, dude, that's incredibly good. Why are you down on yourself? And he's like, well, it's really far away from yours. Like it's nowhere near yours. The kid's like 20 years old. Okay, he's living in England. So he can get to the clubs at age 18. But I built the product to do exactly that. Okay, the link is in the description for that. I know that's not a sales pitch. I just spent three years tirelessly working on it. My point is I know this stuff inside out. It should be very clear in every video that I have an extreme expert understanding of this stuff, okay? More so than anyone. I know this stuff, every little detail inside out, okay? And my students are able to take that information, the result of 10 years of evolution and optimization that happened exponentially by a hyper-analytical, like really intelligent guy. I'm not stroking my own ego. This is just what made the system so great and what made my results so great and for my students so great. And I just handed that on a silver platter. So if, if I was bullshitting and making up the count or hiring hookers for all a thousand or whatever these other stupid claims are that are doubting me, even though I have so much proof, then how would these guys be crushing it? Okay, unless you think the reviews are fake as well. Okay, but I have, like, I had one guy that was like, oh, the reviews are fake and I'm showing like the exact, like verified Google signature. This like really came from this address and this is a real review. And I have countless reviews of that. Okay, we'll throw some of them up on the screen where you see guys just going leaps and bounds. And the story is the same every time. 
They tried a whole bunch of pickup and dating advice, a whole bunch of seduction advice. They got nowhere. That's what happens every time. A lot of people are like, well, you think you have the only good system? Yes, I do. I think in terms of the quality of it, if it was like on a zero to 100 scale, all the rest are down here in the fucking shit. Okay, show me any coach that's churning out beasts. Show me any coach that's churning out experts at this. I am. Can anyone else say that? Can anyone else say they've banged as many girls as I have? No, from cold approach, no. And it's the same with my students. I'm consistently churning out guys that are extremely good. Can any other coach say that? No, they can't. And for the past seven years, it's been a word of mouth referral business. And once I hit a thousand and I just saw so many success stories, I had a few students come forward to me and they're like, dude, you need to put this in front of more people. You changed my life. Like you were the single, like most important, like point of happiness change in my life, like for the positive. And you need to put this in front of more people. And I was like, you're right. So that's why I got serious about my YouTube um, about five weeks ago. I was at a little over 3,000 subscribers. Now I'm about to hit 5,000. So I just jumped from three to 5,000 in five weeks because I'm putting out consistent content. It's very high quality. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And this is in an industry where you just have a bunch of marketers ripping people off and scamming people. They're giving you fake proof. Okay, they're giving you fake stories. And I expose these people and everyone comes in and pours on the hate, okay? I'm gonna continue to do it. It's not gonna be a focus of the channel or anything. It's gonna be here and there against some of the big heroes and gurus that you worship that I know for a fact are bullshitting you, are scamming you, are lying to you, okay? That aren't getting guys good, that are keeping guys perpetually confused so they can keep selling to them, okay? The business model of most companies in this industry is to continue to sell to you, is to keep you on the Ferris wheel, okay? If, if they get you good and you get off the Ferris wheel, then they lose you as a customer and they stop getting you to pay them. Okay, so you have examples where guys are taking 12 RSD live programs, where they're buying 30 RSD products. Insanity, okay? I can fix this problem in a day or two for guys that need one live training or one digital product with me, okay? Link is in the description for that. And also check the info card in the corner for my live trainings, okay? This isn't a fucking mystery, okay? Did he really bang a thousand girls? Yes, I did. Guys are like, but he's ugly, but so he couldn't have, but there had to have been hooker. Regardless of what you think of my physical looks or your you know, insistence on all these different posts and forums that it must have been hookers because it's so high or because Sonny said I paid a babysitter, okay? To, to watch this girl's kids, like who gives a shit, right? It's real. I have overwhelming amounts of proof. Apart from showing you actually my dick going to the girls, which will never happen, okay? It's true, it's all real. Okay, very quickly I wanna go over another quick review by a guy, Pancake Mouse, who's respected on the forums, okay, so he writes, he says, I've watched the entire thing on 1.5X speed naturally over the course of the last week and I'm pretty floored. I've never found a guy who sells products that doesn't have some sort of bullshit in their philosophy. Even guys I learn the most from, like Black Dragon, Krauser, and Good Looking Loser have major flaws in my opinion with their systems. Yeah, because Krauser's a fucking bald retard. j Mob is the only guy I've seen put a practical system together that combines multiple lead sources, night game, online game, and day game, that result in getting laid while minimizing time spent on women. The advantage of j Mall's underproduced rambling videos is that you see him at his rawest, and better yet, it's all actionable, practical advice. Ta-da, like my whole channel, right? This is my focus. No fluff, no philosophy, no abstraction like all the other gurus are found of, fond of. All right, so when it comes to proof, there's something called in-field footage, okay? That involves taking a hidden camera, okay? A lot of times it has to be equipped with night vision if you're gonna be in a nightclub or a bar. And then you have a hidden microphone, okay? And there's a lot of work that goes into this. You have to make sure you have the right angle. You have to make sure that you, you know, the battery isn't dying when you're capturing the, the scene that you're not losing the audio. I recorded tons of this stuff and I lost about a third of it. I still have way more than anyone, but there's all these technical difficulties that can happen. Okay, the battery dies, the audio cord falls out, the person had a bad shot and someone was in the way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and then you need to pay an editor who has to go through frame by frame and blur that girl's face and has to go through and bleep out her phone number and bleep out her name and bleep out where she, what area of the city she lives in and what her profession is, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot of work. And then if you wanna break down that information so you can give it for free on YouTube, for instance, certain products, it's a whole bunch more work where you have to like go through and have the editor switching back and forth. And then you have, after all that work, right, to put out that, that over the shoulder captured scene, like, and then I put it out for free, for instance, on YouTube, you'll have a whole bunch of haters come in and be like, oh, that has to be fake, that has to be hired access, all this bullshit, right? None of my infields were ever faked, okay? I have so many 
to, to claim that they were faked is just absurd. Okay, there are other coaches that have been caught faking. Tom Torero has been caught faking infield footage. Um, Justin Wayne, the vice caught him on camera while he was mic'd up telling the girl that if she doesn't behave a certain way, he's not gonna pay her. Okay, different RSD coaches have been exposed and caught using paid models and paid actresses, okay, or Hollywood connections and instructing them to behave and, and do certain things, okay? A student came to me and he showed me video of Julian Blanc instructing an actress to do something on a program, okay? I never needed to do that even once, not that I even would because it completely goes against everything I stand for in the community, but my game is so tight and I'm not bragging, I'm just saying I kept the amount of times I took a girl home more than the number of nights I went out. Me and my old business partner, Josh, we did like six months of filming in the first year in 2014. And we were going out five nights a week and we were taking girls home more often than nights out, which means on any given night, either him or I took a girl home or both, okay? But the, the number of times that we both took a girl home or one of us took like a girl home and then went back out and took another girl home that same night was more than the times where we like struck out and didn't bring any girls home, brought home zero. So our skill was so high that it, like, that's what, what frustrated us is there's all these guys running around claiming to be authorities, claiming to be dating masters that are clearly very beta guys, that clearly are not getting results, that clearly are not crushing it, that are not slaying it. They don't have any of the backup and the proof that we have. And they're just putting out the, these shit videos in terms of instruction, these shit videos in terms of infield hidden camera. And everyone's like, oh, this is such great stuff, right? Not really. Okay, you need to go to the guys that are able to pull more than the number of nights they're going out, okay? Now I have over 100 instances of taking a girl home from start to finish, all right? I have many other hundreds and thousands of infield footage sets recorded as well, but I have over 100 of from start to finish talking to a girl and actually bringing her home, okay? Which is a lot, okay? Most of it's in my product. A lot of it I haven't even released, okay? No coach has even close to that. It's very clear and I'll just play devil's advocate here, for people that say that there might be actresses or hired girls or that they're hookers or any of this bullshit, I show examples like the Victoria's Secret breakdown on my channel. That chick, I asked her to like go on an instant date. Oh no, I can't. I was asking her like, can we go do this right now? No, I can't. Yeah, I got her number. I tried to kiss her, it didn't work. I'm showing this stuff because this is real game. Okay, a lot of the coaches will do a whole bunch of like improbabilistic, really flashy stuff and then they'll show these little bits that worked, okay? And it's not solid game. It doesn't lead to results in the long run, but it's just flashy and good for getting views and people being like, wow, this is a master, right? Like Tyler in his hot seat at home, he did lots of like super crazy shit across all his filming. I talked to people that were hanging out with him and then that's what he, he picked all these little crazy bits that happened to pull off in these really improbabilistic situations every now and then and made that look like that was what was happening all the time. And then anyone that meets him in person sees him get destroyed, okay, anyone that takes a live training with him sees him get fucking utterly annihilated and sees his game as dog shit, but they were led to believe that he's a superhero from this doctored set of footage, okay, not to mention the actresses that were being used. In the hidden camera breakdown where I showed the difficult girl, all right, the girl's being difficult over and over and over, like there's literally all these situations where you're seeing like real, like how I'm dealing with non-compliance, how I'm dealing with the girl not being interested, how I'm like turning things around, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't always get the girl. I don't, I'm not ever gonna show stupid rejection compilations. I think that's retarded. But <laughs> it's very clear this is real footage. And anyone that hangs out with me can see that I fucking can crush it. I have, like I said, I have nothing to hide. Anyone that is like questioning me, that's like another coach, or whatever, I'm like, we can spend extended periods of time and put down monetary wagers and have a whole bunch of witnesses and I will wipe the floor with you with, with bad odds. Like I will like five extra results and stuff like this. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, put your money where your mouth is, right? Like, I can back up all this shit. I have more proof. Like, where, like, where is your over 100 pieces of footage of taking a girl home, okay, from start to finish? Where are your other hundreds or thousands of infield footage recordings? All right, this was like blood, sweat, and tears poured into this shit because I can back it up. By the same token, on my old Instagram account, okay, my JMOF pickup Instagram account, I posted about 300 girls in a row of closes, okay? Maybe with some exceptions if I didn't get to take a picture. But I was taking pictures with each girl after the close. Like lots of times they were like in a bra or like panties or some shit. Okay, their faces were blocked or blurred. But it was very clear like that we had had sexual relations, okay, without actually showing me fucking the girl, which I can't do. Okay, and guys are still be like, oh, well, we didn't see it, so it doesn't count. Like you paid a hooker to, to take a picture in a bra. It's like, don't, that's such a dumb argument, okay? Like 
I'll address this right now, now that we're on the topic of guys saying, what if these are all hookers, right? Sonny Arvado, one of the old guys that I worked with, okay? Him and I had a personal beef, okay? I mentioned to crowds that he was using steroids, okay? Which hasn't been confirmed, and it was just kind of like a low blow because I was really upset and really pissed and very emotional at the time in terms of like all this back and forth we were having. And it, we brought it out into the forums, all right? Now he knew that I was using as a lead source, just like I bang strippers, okay? Strippers are expecting guys to come in and spend money on lap dances. He knew I was banging strippers for free, okay? Without having to get any dances or anything by using stripper game. I've slept with over 30 strippers. There's this whole different system for strippers. He also knew that I was going on this website called Seeking Arrangement, okay? Now there is a site, it's very similar to strippers, where these girls are looking for a sugar daddy, all right? But most of the guys on there are fat, they're old, they're out of shape. Half of them don't even have pictures because they're actually like real CEOs or real like important business people. They can't like have their face out on the site or they're trying to cheat okay? and they don't want their wife or their, or their community to find out that they're being a bastard cheating. So when a younger guy with professional pictures, okay, comes onto this site and I have smooth charisma and game and all this stuff and I'm, treat I'm also screening out the gold diggers. There's this whole system behind it. Sonny was well aware of all this. He knew I wasn't paying any of those girls, okay? But he like screenshotted like me texting him saying like, oh, I'm really close to hitting 800. This girl wants me to pay for her babysitter. I don't want to pay for her babysitter. I don't usually do shit like that. But I'm about to hit 800 and she's really hot. I think I'm just going to pay for her babysitter. To me, that's not like really a big deal. It's almost like paying for a girl's cab. Okay, it's like a little bit more, but it's not like paying her for sex. And he knows I didn't pay any of those girls, right? But he screenshotted that and it just like snowballed and ran away. So then like, who is next? Uh, Red Sky PA, who's a no one in New York City who doesn't even like me. He's like, oh, he's been exposed. He's been exposed. Look, he's like, here's a girl on his Instagram that happens to be on Seeking Arrangement, okay? And so that means he must have paid her. No, it fucking doesn't. I'm meeting girls in there. I'm screening out the gold diggers and then I bang hot DTF young chicks, okay? Just like I bang strippers. That doesn't mean you need to pay them. You break yourself out of the customer frame. They're like, wow, this is such a refreshing contrast to all these old fucking losers. Okay, and then boom, you got her in your life and you can even make her a regular. Okay, and Sonny knows that I wasn't paying those girls. And it really fucking pissed me off that he tried to claim that as a low blow lie, okay? Because when I was on a trip with him in Colombia, he went on like a hooker spree, okay? For all you in the bodybuilding forums, they're like, oh, they come on to my, my videos and like, Sonny told us, us big guys, that, uh, that you just bang hookers and your whole count is fake and it's all hookers. Okay, just because I used Seeking Arrangement before as a lead source, okay? Your hero, Sonny, went on a little hooker spree and probably fucked over 10 hookers in Colombia, okay? That settles that, but it amplified even further, and this shows you how stuff on the internet can get out of control and perverse and skewed. And then this other dude who's a bald nobody in England, okay, Krauser PUA, all right? This dude has posted his actual stats and they're atrocious. Like, he's getting very low like phone number closes off the approaches. He's getting very low close amounts. I know people that have taken his live programs that have hung out with him and watched him game. His game is dog shit, it's horrible. And the girls he gets are average and below average. And his students are just, you know, fucking doing terrible. And I'm not trying to make this into a roast thing. I'm just addressing this because I see too much of this shit on the forums related to saying my whole count is invalidated because Sonny said that I paid a girl's babysitter, okay? Just because I used a site before as a lead source to fuck hot chicks, just like I would at a strip club, okay? And just because I might have paid this girl's babysitter doesn't mean that I'm that my entire count is hookers. It's such a ridiculous leap. But then Krauser wrote an article and he's like, oh, he's been exposed by Red Sky who, who got this info from Sonny, which came from a feud where we were just fucking taking low blows because we were pissed. And Sonny knows I wasn't paying those girls. And then Krauser goes on to say, oh, I knew this and this and this. And he tried to make a whole bunch of claims and I emailed them and I said, I can defend in full detail every single claim you made. Bring me on an interview, bring me on a podcast. I'll be respectful, I won't trash talk you. And I will defend each one of them in turn. And he's like, oh no, I'm not interested. Okay, and so now I have all these fucking retards that read his stupid shit. And he's no one anyways, he's like retired now. He's like a, a troll looking, like deformed, like Quasimodo type character that's bald and like washed up and he like wrote a bunch of high priced books and just lives off of book royalties, okay? He, his contributions to the game are pretty much almost nothing. His methods are dog shit. His skill level is very low and, and he's jealous. A lot of this comes from jealousy. A lot of these coaches, they see that my skill level, my results are light years beyond theirs and they just can't 
they don't know what to do. They can't fathom it. They think, oh, it's just easier to say, oh, he must be a liar. And Krauser doesn't like when people are faking skills and results. And I'm extremely against that as well. And I emailed him, I'm like, you're gonna literally go after the most legit guy in the game that has the most backup and the most proof. I was like, I'm not, don't let me in with fucking Justin Wayne and these other fuckheads, all right? But to claim that the entire count is hookers is just insanity, okay? So on Instagram, I posted like 300 different chicks in a row, okay? The account was finally blocked and banned, but I was showing, I was chronicling like, look, here's a whole bunch in a row, okay? Now related to the Instagram point, I thought that was very powerful proof showing 300 different girls in like, you know, clearly getting dressed situations that were like in my bedroom or like, it was very obvious in like each one of the pictures that it was a hookup situation, not just like running up to a hot girl on the street and snapping a picture. Now by a related token, I've been in advanced forums and in advanced WhatsApp groups for the past like seven years, ever since getting really immersed in this stuff in 2012. And I post a picture of like every new clothes. Okay, so advanced guys like Alex Villanchik from Playing With Fire, David Swift from Swift Pickup, okay? a bunch of different underground community guys that are not mainstream, but like Alex and David, for instance, those guys were like making jokes at the Sopot Summit last year during our speeches. They're like, yeah, like our phones were like all flooded. The memory was just like filled with pictures of me with chicks, all right? And I have tons, I have pictures of almost every one of the girls. And like literally there's nothing to hide. Like, so these guys were seeing, what my point is, is that I have these advanced guys and not just those two, there's tons of advanced guys all across the community, like the best of the best all see me as the top guy, okay? What does that say? And a lot of them have spent months with me. A lot of them have spent a lot of time with me. A lot of them have seen me do crazy shit on a consistent basis. They've seen this proof in the WhatsApp groups for time and time and time again, okay? For countless weeks and months and years as they're passing. Literally, even if you know me like a little bit, you know that I take the count extremely seriously. But meaning, if I brought home like a really hot chick, right? And we go into my room and like my, I'm like, see you later friends, like to my friends I'm with, and she only gives me like a blowjob or a handjob, for instance. Okay, the next morning my friends are like, hey, how was it last night? Was she was it a good sex? Was she awesome? I'd be like, it didn't close. Oh, what? Did you see how hot she was? Yeah, but it didn't close. Oh, dude, what the fuck? Like, she was so hot. Like, I would have fucked her. I'm like, yeah, I wanted to. It just didn't happen. And you know how that counts? Getting like a blowjob from a 9 or a 9.5 as a 0 on the lay count score. The term lay count, okay, that is a relative thing, okay? And what I mean by that, let's take an example. All right, I went into college as a virgin. All right, that's no joke. I lost my virginity at the end of my freshman year of college, okay, in 2002. And I would go over all the math and stats and all that stuff with you guys in a little bit. But going into my third year of undergraduate, okay, in 2003 or four, I met a girl that had been with nine different guys. All right, and at that time I had been with three girls, okay? So in my mind, I'm like, how did someone sleep with nine people? Like it just seemed like really, really, really high. And it bothered me for months. I was like, what a huge slut. I can't believe she slept with nine different guys. That's fucking crazy. On and on, right? About the difference between three and nine, or right? It's a very relative thing, okay? The same thing happened when I got to graduate school, okay? After undergraduate, I had slept with 17 different girls. When I got to graduate school, I met a guy that had slept with like 29 girls. And I was like, oh my God, like you're the master, like show me your ways. Cause I thought I was pretty good for getting 17. And I was like, show me your ways. Like, I need to learn. How are you doing this? He's like, oh, well, you know, this and that. But when I was like in like the 30s or 40s lay count, I remember looking at the concept of 100 and thinking it was like impossible. I was like, I remember telling my roommate at the time, I was like, dude, can you imagine if we hit triple digits? He's like, yeah, it's not possible. I'm like, yeah, but wouldn't that be cool to say like, oh my God, we fucked like triple digits worth of girls. And he's like, yeah, it's not gonna happen. It happened like another time when I had hit like 120 something, I met a dude on the forums that was at like 146. And I was like, holy shit, like, how are you doing that? You know, how are you so much higher than me? And it, and it just continued like that. So as I progressed, now like a couple hundred or 300 or 400, that seems like nothing, all right? Between July 2017 and July 2018, I was able to sleep with 245 new girls, okay? And the total count is now over a thousand. So 100 seems like a typical year now. I'm not trying to downplay it or objectify it or anything. I'm just talking about the relative aspect of how a count can seem to someone that is much lower, right? It's outside of the reality. Like when I hit 150 on the RSD Nation forums back in, this was like January, 2013, okay? So about six years ago, I hit 150 and I had this whole forum post thread how I was gonna f like film my first hidden camera infield and I was going to be 
mic'd up and I had a shirt that had 150 stick figures on it and it said JMOV 150 on the back. And the whole goal was I had to pull a nine, I had to take home a nine while wearing the shirt, while mic'd up and being filmed. And it took actually a few weeks, like I had opportunities with sevens and eights and there was other opportunities where I like got fucked up because of the shirt and the girls were like, what the fuck is this? Right? <clears throat> Some girls didn't even comment about it. The girl that I took home, the, the nine that I eventually pulled, didn't even comment on it, which was weird. But I did it, and then a lot of the guys on the forum were like, 150, no way, right? So you can imagine, now that it's gotten much higher, like I've joked with my friends, like as it gets higher and higher and higher, it just sounds more and more ridiculous to people. Because most people, as I know from my coaching and being immersed in the community over the past 10 years or more, these people, are usually between like five and 15. I think the average amount of partners within a lifetime for the average person is six or seven partners. Okay, so when someone's talking about banging hundreds or now even over a thousand, it just is so far outside of people's realities that they can't comprehend it. All right, I wanted to really press home on that point because that's kind of the first major point. Okay, guys think that it's made up or they think that it must be you know, involving hookers. That's like one of the one of the things that people keep saying these days. Oh, he must have paid a thousand girls. Okay, we'll go into that later. That's totally ridiculous. Important to note that when someone has slept with five or ten girls, like back when I was at three, I thought nine was really high. All right, so something like 20, 30, 40, those are gonna seem extremely high. It's almost incomprehensible to imagine someone being with hundreds or even over a thousand. Okay. And the last point on that topic. I will note, like when I've been introduced to people and, and someone's like, oh, he's banged a lot of girls, like guess, like to the mutual friend, they're like, guess how many girls he's banged. It's really high. And, the, and if the person hasn't been with many girls or they're like younger, okay, because a lot of times many younger people have, don't have much experience, they'll guess like, is it really high? They'll be like, is it like 20? And I'll be like, no, higher. And they'll be like, 25? I'll be like, higher. And they'll be like, 30? And so you can, that really shows the mindset. Like they already think 20 is like super high. Like there was a virgin girl that told me the other day, I told her it's really high and she's like, don't tell me it's over 10, right? So that illustrates, like now a 10 is, like 10 is like a typical month, right? But that illustrates how this can be so far outside of people's realities, all right? So I'm kind of known around the community as like the lay count guy, all right? I'm always asking people, when I'm trying to get a good judgment of their skill level, I say, what's your lay count? Okay, and there's a bunch of other factors that, that factor in, but lay count, is the best objective metric to measure someone's skill in this game. Just like number of points scored and number of championships and games won would be useful for basketball. Just like for the skill game of poker, the amount of uh, earnings per month, the amount of earnings per year, okay, the average amount of earnings. For chess, the amount of wins, okay, the amount of tournaments won, et cetera, et cetera. Sales, the amount of deals closed, okay, the quality of those deals in terms of how much things were upsold and how, what was the total amount numerically that was sold, okay? So in each of these games and pickup and dating seduction, I see that as just another skill game, okay? And I'll, I've justified that in a bunch of other videos. You can learn this just like any other skill game. There's a set of strategy and a set of tactics that you can master over time. So the reason why I talk about lay count is it's the best measure of how often someone is closing a new girl. Like we're doing cold approach, which refers to walking up to a stranger, either in the daytime or the nighttime, or meeting a stranger online with Tinder or Bumble or apps like that. And then our goal is to have sex with that person and potentially turn them into a girlfriend, potentially put them on a rotation and have a set of regulars, okay? But our goal is to sleep with that person. A lot of people will deny that and say, no, the goal is just, you know, something else, which I don't, I don't agree with. Like most, most of, if, you know, if people are being honest with themselves, most guys are on dating apps and most guys are doing these cold approaches, talking to strangers during the day and nighttime so they can sleep with hot girls. Like, am I fucking crazy? I don't think so. So it's natural to look at how many times has that person actually closed, okay? Now the other factors that are relevant are the person's age, their time in the game, how long have they been practicing this seduction stuff and taking it seriously, how often are they going out, what is their average quality, okay? These, this isn't an exact science, but these are things that weigh in. Have they had any easy mode cities like Bangkok, Thailand or Manila, Philippines? where you just walk in for being white and everyone wants to bang you. I haven't had like a traditional easy mode city yet. It's also important to be able to verify their skill level and their claim based on if they have infield footage, which is hidden camera footage, which most people don't have, okay? A lot of coaches have it, or to spend extended periods of time with that person on your own. Okay? And by doing so, you will get to see 
Like how consistent is this person? Like how well are they doing with these girls? So at the time of recording this video, which is the wee hours of Valentine's Day, February 14th of 2019, it's literally 4 a.m. in Poland. Okay, I was doing a bunch of research to back up, and with my editor was helping as well, to back up these different claims, okay? To present to you all who are, who are doubting and questioning. It's fine though, I'm, I'm glad you guys are doubting. It's totally natural and totally healthy. I would doubt too, like I said, when I was at three or 17 lay count, I was like blown away by people that were at nine lay count and 29 lay count, okay? So it's very natural to say, oh, a thousand, that sounds made up, all right? But I've been reporting it all the way through and I'm gonna go over now all the different uh, backup and proof that I have, okay? So at the time of recording this, I've slept with 1,011 girls. Okay? It slowed down a bunch because I've been devoting a lot of time towards YouTube, but I hit 1,000 in mid-December of 2018. All right, so now let's go over the different pieces of evidence that I have. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, I lost my virginity at the end of my first year of college, which was I started college in the fall of 2001. I finished in May of 2001, and my first year was right around towards the very end there. Okay, there was a girl across the, the hall from me, from the dorm hall from me, and we had been good friends, and like she finally like let me bang her at the end of the year and lost my virginity. And <laughs> that was 2002 at the age of 18. Okay, now we're in 2019, okay? So let's look at the college years. So between my freshman year and sophomore year, I only slept with three girls, okay? Going into my third year of college, I'd only been with three girls. Now, as I was going to my third year of college, I didn't drink my first two years. I had social anxiety, I had general anxiety. I was very nervous, very introverted. Going into my third year of college, I started drinking, okay? I started experimenting with going to frat parties and having drinks and allowed me to become very social and very extroverted, okay? And this was kind of like the catalyst that brought about a huge change. So I started going to frat parties. I started having more balls in terms of walking up to strangers, in terms of making moves to try to make out with girls. My game was not sharp by any means, but I was going out a whole bunch. I liked going to parties, I liked drinking, I liked talking to hot girls. Okay, and I didn't have any like real formal strategy. But just by sheer numbers, okay, and there was some iffy quality mixed in at that point, admittedly. Um, I left college having been with 17 chicks. Okay, so that was 2005, I've been with 17 chicks. Then I stepped it up a little bit in graduate school. Okay, I did two different master's programs. I was banging girls in graduate school. After my two graduate programs, I had been with 45 chicks. Okay, then I took the job doing the nuclear missile stuff for Lockheed Martin. I was working on nuclear missile defense for the US and I was continuing to go out to bars, go out to clubs, getting a, a lay here or there. Note at this time I was never doing any online stuff and not really almost any day stuff either. I was using alcohol to get past approach anxiety and to be able to make moves, okay? And I was doing almost exclusively night game, okay? Nighttime bars and club game. Now somewhere like in the 50s lay count, okay, I decided finally after a couple years of poking and prodding by a good friend who did a PhD in quantum physics at UCLA, he was really convincing me to read the book The Game. Okay, that was my foray into the community. I read that, I was really intrigued. I thought, okay, there's a method to the madness, all right? It caused me to move on further and read his second recommendation, which was The Mystery Method by Mystery, Eric von Markovic. And I read that and I was like, holy shit. And that was much more structural and broken down. I have a couple of videos on my channel that I will link to up here about the pros. We'll put the pros of Mystery Method up here. And then I also went over what I think are the cons and the outdated stuff in our modern time for Mystery Method. And we'll put that up here as well. So as you can see in this screenshot, my first night out ever using Mystery Method was February 24th of 2009, okay? Which is kind of cool because now it's February 14th, 2019, which means in 10 days, I'll literally hit my 10 year anniversary ta -da, of ever going out and doing formal Mystery Method, which was my first practice of formal game. I had this blog and I was writing about my experiences, my successes and failures, okay? And this was in 2009, almost 10 years ago, okay? And then you see a few weeks later, I meet this girl at like this dance rave, and then I ended up getting in a relationship with that girl. I stopped blogging, because I stopped going out and doing cold approach, and I was in a relationship for a year and a half, all right? And we had some threesomes in that relationship. This girl was bisexual, we were living together. So after that was finished, around 2011, I had been with 64 girls, and then I was able to use mystery method to move forward and break my first 100 in June, of 2012, okay? 
June 2012 was when I first hit 100. So you can see it took me 10 years from 2002 into 2012 to do the first 100, okay? Now when I hit 100, I really took things to the next level, okay? I started a new blog. It was kind of like, okay, here's the advanced, here's the fucking heavy shit. Now I need to fucking really go crazy and take this like into the stratosphere, all right? I never imagined hitting 1,000, but here's kind of my mindset and what helped me to evolve and optimize my method and get all these incredible results that led me to banging over a thousand girls. Okay, once I hit 100, I basically started looking all around, who are the top guys in the game? Okay, I, I went and sought them out. I was also part of a forum called Top Beasts. There was about 30 guys in there and they had been selected based on the quality of their field reports that had been written in the forums. Okay, how well they're writing about their nights out, who was vouching for them in the community, who was saying that they were top guys, et cetera, et cetera. A whole bunch of other criteria and they brought all of us together. What I did was I made it a point to meet each and every one of those guys. I'd already known some of them from before, just from meeting through different friends. And I was able to extract all the key things that they're doing and find all the common overlap in the key areas. Okay, and that's what formed the basis of my method. Now, as the years have passed, I've constantly been scanning the method for weak spots. I've constantly been trying to find anyone that can beat me at any particular area of game, okay? whether that be daytime stuff, whether that be bar and club stuff, whether it be texting, whether it be re retention and rotations, whether it be hired guns talking to bars and waitresses, whether it be social circle stuff, whatever it may be, I found guys who are better than me at the particular area, and then I learned from them and adapted the method accordingly. Okay, and I'm also a very big systems guy. I study computer science, cognitive science, philosophy, psychology, and I can see this whole game just like a chessboard. <laughs> And I look at it and I can spot like weak points and I can spot key areas that are gonna really, if improved, lead to a lot of end result improvements. Okay, so I was able to innovate and split test. Split testing is a marketing term. Basically, you take one version of something, you have a new version, you test them both, you take data, whichever performs better, that wins. Okay, then that moves forward and you can test it against other things. So this has really been like a, <clears throat> So this has really been like a scientific process where it's just been evolving and evolving and evolving, okay? And I started really honing in on the areas that matter. So night game has always been the bread and butter, bars and clubs. My first 400 girls were almost completely from night game, okay? I've never really done much day game all throughout. I have day game closes, but I just think the bang for the buck is not there. The amount of girls that you need to talk to and the amount of time it takes as you're walking around and all this shit is just too time consuming and doesn't yield enough results, okay? But around 400, I started incorporating online. Prior to that, I thought it was cheating because I thought that, okay, if a guy has a model profile, he doesn't need any strategy and tactics, okay? But at the end of the day, I realized you can still game those systems. You can still get laid with hot girls from those systems. So apart from innovating my game, meeting the best guys, taking what I can from their methods, okay? Split testing things, evolving it constantly, okay? Trying to tweak it further and further and further. Besides doing all that stuff, I also lived in the top cities in the game, okay? And I'll cover the cities in a moment. Okay, I was living in the best in biggest cities where they have the hottest girls. Okay, that also contributed to the success. And then I was able to quit working a nine to five. Okay, quit working, or I actually I got fired from a few jobs from a few Fortune 500 companies. I got fired from IBM, I got fired from Sony, I got fired from Hewlett Packard, okay? And eventually I was like, fuck this. And I just, <laughs> I just started doing coaching, okay? Because I, I was too passionate about the game, I was too passionate about making it better. And I was just, work was getting in the way, all right? It's really hard to go out at night and be out till two or three or four in the morning and be drinking and shit like that too, and then get up at seven or eight for work, okay? And it, this is going on and on and on. And additionally, having that extra time by not having to have a real job allows time to set up more dates, to text and work leads more, you can run more volume, you can go out more frequently. So not having a job for like the past five years, a real like official nine to five job, Okay, now that also contributed heavily to being able to close more by having more free time. But doing a little bit of math, I went over how I hit 103 in June of 2012, okay? Now, in the current time of February of 2019, I am at 1,011, all right? So if you subtract those amounts, okay, you have about 900 girls in six and a half years, okay? Now, if you do the math on that, it comes out to 11.6 girls per month. Okay, all the way through. Now, that's just the average. There were some months where I was able to bang 20 something girls. There were some months where I only slept with five or 10, okay? And 
on average, is 11.6, so it's totally reasonable. It's not like astronomical. It's not like I'm claiming to be banging a different skill girl every single day, okay? And it also, the rate increased, okay? So I was able to do 100 in 2013. I was able to do 100 in 2014. As I moved into 2015, between 2014 and 2015, I was able to do 143, okay? And then between July 17, July 18, I was able to do 245. All right, now most coaches and most guys will never ever even get close to 245, and I was able to do that in a year. But the first 100 took 10 years, okay? So you see how there's this kind of this exponential phenomenon as I increase my skill level, as I innovate the method, okay? And I continue to live in these top cities, okay? So let's cover the cities. Okay, so I did about 40 or so in these small cities in New York, in New York State. Okay, that was in my college years where I was going to school and also in England where I did my second master's. Okay, then I moved to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I went from around 46 count to around 150 count. Okay, and that brought me up to January or February of 2013, which is when I moved to Vegas. In Las Vegas from February of 2013 until December of 2013, I was able to bang 100 chicks. All right, I went from 150 to 250 approximately. In January 2014, I moved to San Diego, California and I was there until August 2015. I was able to go from 250 to 450, okay? So about 200 chicks in San Diego. Then I was in Miami from August 2015 until December of 2015, but I was living with a stripper on Lincoln Road in South Beach, okay? We were having some threesomes, but the count really didn't move very much during that period. Then I was in my hometown, all right? From January of 2016 to March 2016, I went from around 450 to around 500 at that point. Then I moved to San Juan, Puerto Rico, in March of 2016 and stayed until about February of 2017. During that time period, I went from around 500 count to around 600 count. All right, so there's about 100 Latin girls in Puerto Rico that I had sex with. Then in March of 2017, I moved to Times Square in Manhattan and I was doing religious infield filming to, to stockpile even more infield footage, hidden camera footage. Okay, and I went from about 600 to about 640 girls in that month, month and a half. Then April 2017 to around July 2017, I was helping my friend in Texas with a sales job. Okay, that was in Lubbock, Texas, and also in Fort Worth, Texas. Then in August 2017, I moved to Kiev, Ukraine. Okay, I spent a few months there. Then I moved to Lisbon, Portugal. All right, that's where I moved through the low 700s and going into the mid 700s, all right? Both of those places were fairly difficult for game. Uh, Kiev, the girls usually took two to four dates to close. It's really hard to have one night stands there. It's also really hard to close on the first date. All right, so it took a lot more work to close and I eventually built up a rotation and mostly just had sex with that rotation. In Lisbon, in Portugal, again, another stripper. There's, a, there's been a whole bunch of stripper girlfriends throughout this journey. But I had a stripper girlfriend, a Brazilian, and she had two Brazilian roommates that worked at the same strip club. It was kind of a four-way relationship with three Brazilian strippers, which obviously ended up horribly. But the local, before that, the local Portuguese girls are very prude, just kind of like the Ukrainian girls. So not a whole lot of lay count was acquired during this period. In January of 2018, okay, about a year ago, I moved to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That's where I was hanging out with Sonny Arvado. We were doing lifting and Muay Thai and that kind of stuff. That was around the mid 700s. And I took that straight through until I went to Warsaw, Poland in the summer, okay, at the end of the summer. But I was able to get close to 900 before moving to Warsaw. From August of 2018 until the current time of February, I was able to go from 900 to 1,011, all right? So there's been about 100 girls in Poland, but that's been mostly Polish. There's also Ukrainians thrown in, Belarus, Lithuania, like different countries, Croatia. <clears throat> so that, there you have it. It's not some fucking big mystery about how this could have happened, okay? I was devoting literally almost all my time to this, like for better or worse. I was just, a tip, here's a typical day, or here's a typical week, I should say. Almost always, throughout all these years, hitting clubs and bars on Fridays and Saturdays. On Fridays and Saturdays, I would aim to get five to 15 phone numbers per night, okay, which I call leads. Okay, so that starts to add up. If we look just at Friday and Saturday, five to 15 on each of those nights, that gives you between 10 and 30. All right, you multiply that by four, and that's going to give you between 40 and 120 leads per month, just from those two weekend nights out, okay? Then if you add in Wednesdays, you add in Thursdays, okay, you add in some happy hour events, 
you add in some kind of like Sunday fun day thing where people are outside drinking, okay, you start doing Tinder, you start doing Bumble, you just start getting a whole bunch of leads. So what happens is your week starts getting stacked up with dates. Okay, and I've, I have a whole product called the Leads Machine, which I will link to up here. And that is really focused on taking a phone number from any lead source, whether it be a bar, a club, a daytime environment, Tinder, Bumble, whatever. And I give you the exact control path to work that down to a date. So on a given day, like say it's a Saturday, I might have a new date at 12, and then another new date at two, and then another new date at four, and then another one at six, and then another one at eight, okay? And then after that, I would go out to the nightclub. So each of those is an opportunity to close. So really, if you're working your leads properly, if you're managing all your phone numbers properly, and you just keep accumulating them and collecting them, and your game is strong, and you keep that funnel tight, all right? So now a lot of them are just bottlenecking and slipping through the cracks, Okay, you just start racking up tons of closes, all right? So you go out, you collect a whole bunch of numbers, you add in your Tinder and your Bumble stuff, and then what you're left with is a whole bunch of dates, okay? Now you have 10, 11 dates in a week, okay? If you're closing two of those dates per week, not even counting girls you bring home from the club, two per week is 100 per year, okay? See how this math isn't as crazy as it sounds? Guys are just very bad at this. They're not doing enough volume, okay? So they're not getting enough quantity of leads that can work into dates but they're also very bad at how they're doing the approach and how they're running the interaction. So if the girl doesn't want to give him the phone number, or if she does, it's a pity number, and the girl will flake. Okay, I talk extensively in my five hour, becoming somewhat famous, five hour video on my channel about the girl's mindset and how like, you were already fucked from the beginning if you didn't bring enough value to the table, you didn't move things forward, you, you weren't physical, all these different things I talk about in my videos. If you don't do that stuff, you're not gonna get many leads and you're not gonna have them filter into dates, okay? And maybe you're fucking up the dates you go on, and at the end of the day, it's sifting out into nothing, all right? And then you're like, well, how's this guy fucking 100 girls a year? How's he fucking 200 girls in a year? I'm fucking zero. It's because you're doing it wrong, okay? I just put out in my last video, the announcement for boot camp tour. We're gonna be hitting two weekends in Vegas, then off to LA, then Miami, then New York, then London. Okay, well, I'll put the link up here to that. You guys need to get on board with, in terms of getting good at this, all right? You can fuck hundreds of girls. Like, it's like feast or famine, okay? The, the guys I know that are really good at this, it's like this tiny little percentage. The rest of the guys are just, I'm gonna go, you know, walk on the mall for five hours a day. I'm gonna go hit up like every club in the city and be a fucking creep and do all this stupid shit. And it, when the dust settles, it's mostly because they're following dumb RSD shit. When the dust settles, nobody's getting laid, okay? I'm here to change that, okay? And I have a team I'm building but we're gonna be going around touring every one of the continents, okay? And my products, I'm going more mainstream with this. I'm trying to blow up the YouTube channel. Everything's going more mainstream. I am here to fix this for you guys, okay? I have walked the walk the entire way through. I've seen and done everything with this game. I'm writing a book that'll be released this summer, chronicling my whole journey, okay? And like I said, I have nothing to hide, okay? So let's cover more items of proof that we have. And this isn't all about numbers for me either. I'm taking it very seriously, guys know that if it doesn't close, it doesn't close. Or even if it was like a close situation, it doesn't count. Okay, I can have oral sex with a girl for hours. It I don't count that. So guys know it's like a real big deal to me. Also by that same token, it's not just been like a numbers race for me. It's not just been like, get lay count increases at all costs, like no matter what, okay? It hasn't been like that. And the reason for that is there's hot chicks on rotation. Like I'm running six to 12 girl rotations, right? I was running 16 girls in Warsaw, Poland for a while, which means on a Friday or Saturday, lots of times I'd rather spend the time in with a hot chick, okay? Why? Because she doesn't have work in the morning like she does during the weekdays. But we go out to dinner and she sleeps over and watch a movie and stuff, and that Friday and Saturday, I could have went out and gotten more leads, okay? Or I'm hanging out with a, a regular, or I'm doing business stuff, and I could have went on a new date, okay? So I'm turning down new dates all the time. I'm turning down new opportunities to go out and acquire more leads or more phone numbers all the time. And this has been the case all throughout. Even if it's like, say I have an option to bring home like an average chick or whatever, a lot of times I won't do it, okay? Because I want to keep my quality high, as, you, as guys have seen on Instagram, and as you see in my infield footage, my hidden camera footage. Okay, so despite it being really high, it hasn't been just this like balls to the wall numbers race. It's a result of having an extremely high level of skill, so I keep the funnel, right? So I'm not losing leads throughout, it's not choking off, that my skill is very high. I'm doing volume, so I'm making sure I'm pumping in leads at the top, okay? And then just every part of my game is extremely optimized and refined, okay? I know exactly what to text, 
I know exactly what to say and do when I see a stranger that I want to take home. I know exactly what to do on a date. I know exactly what to do when the girl comes back to my house. And this is how I built my products. This is how I built my live training because I've seen so much. I have so much data. I have over 10,000 phone numbers in my phone and I've slept with over a thousand girls. Okay, now I didn't track non-sex hookups, meaning makeouts, hand jobs, blow jobs. I didn't track that stuff if it didn't end in sex. Okay, so that's gonna be much higher for like the hookup count. This 1,000 closes expands into all these other non-sexual hookups and into all these other girls and strangers I talked to in situations I've been in. So that's why I say I've pretty much seen and done it all, okay? I also am part of a group called the Centurions. Okay, it's for guys over late count of 100, which I hit seven years ago, back in 2012. That group has 64 members in it, and it has the counts, the late counts, of all the top members in the group, okay? You can only enter the group if multiple people can vouch for you. So if someone has to really, like, have spent a bunch of time with you in the field, out doing game, and can vouch for your skills, and vouch for your results, and vouch for the fact that you really are over 100, okay? So it's a lot of vetting to get into that. And we will show a screenshot here of the top members in that group. And look, there we have yours truly, far ahead of the top, okay? And that's even gone to a further lead ahead of these guys. Now, like I said, the best guys I know in this game are between 300 and 400 count, okay? Some guys are starting to hit 400. I hired a coach that's gonna be on my new team. He was at 397 two nights ago, okay? And now, or was that last night? He, 397. He's about to hit 400, all right? Not many guys are above 400. I'm hiring coaches that have, they have to be at least 300 late count, okay? Which means they are extremely good at this, okay? And again, why am I caring about late count? Because that shows your objective skill to close the deal, which is the goal of this game, and this is why we are all doing it, okay? So that proves you can do it well if it's an actual real count that you're reporting. As I've demonstrated in this video, okay, between the field reports by other guys have been written, between the advanced guys in the WhatsApp groups, okay, like David Swift and Alex Vilenchek, between 300 pictures on Instagram, between all these pictures I have of girls that aren't even on Instagram in bedroom and compromising situations, okay? Um, all the infield footage I've recorded, okay, for months and months and months and months across many different years, okay? I'm gonna be recording more on the, these tours, these live tours I'm doing all around the world. I'm gonna be recording more footage, okay? The fact that I know extremely well what I'm talking about in every single video, the fact that I'm getting results for students by far better than anyone in the community, okay? From virgin to 47, lay count in six months. Guys mastering pulling, mastering getting really, really good on night one of program. Students from a few years ago being in the 300s now. That's unheard of. No one's doing this in the community, okay? This isn't, this video was not meant to brag. I, I hope it was not off-putting. I went into some personal beef that I had to address with the sunny red sky and Krauser bullshit, okay? which in large part has resulted in just a whole like witch hunt. Like, okay, his whole count's fake. Okay, his whole count's fake. He paid babysitter or he used this, this site where there's girls looking for sugar daddies. Okay, his whole count's fake. It's all hookers. No, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Um, the invitation still exists. Krauser, you, you know, we can get you some exposure. You know, it's no one knows who the fuck you are for you to go through in, all, in full detail. If you give a shit about the truth, I have full backup of that stuff, okay? It is like fucking 5.30 in the morning. I need to get some rest. It is Valentine's Day. It's gonna be a busy day, okay? Thank you guys so much for whoever stuck through to the end. I encourage you to check out my product if you're really serious about getting good at this. The link is in the description. Like and subscribe to this video and this channel. I'm just gonna keep pumping out amazing content, okay? And there's gonna be cinematic shots with multiple cameras. We're gonna have 4K cameras, walking videos, all this stuff across our tour. It's gonna be montages of infield cutups and just all kinds of crazy shit, right? So you're in for a huge treat. Please share this channel if you found it useful with your friends. Thank you for watching my proof of how I banged a thousand girls. And there will be much more details and stories and stuff like this in my book that's coming out this summer, okay? It's gonna be an autobi autobiography, how I went from zero to a thousand chicks, okay? Never could have dreamed or expected this to happen. Here I am, and now I'm at your service to teach you how to do whatever your goals are in game. Take care guys, thank you so much for watching. This is John Anthony, and I am going to pass the fuck out. Good night.